Hi, I'm Claire and this is Congoing 101 Tips and Tricks to Have the Best Possible Time at a Convention. Now this video started off as an idea I had because I love going to conventions. I'm going to a couple of conventions in a few weeks and I was hyped to talk all about it. And then I tweeted that I was going to make this video and ask people to share their favorite tips for enjoying a convention and I got so 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 many response. I've got a document of like four pages of notes so this might be a long one. One thing to point out before we get started is that my convention going experience centers mostly literary and fandom type conventions that happen in like a hotel over the weekend and have a lot of panels. I'm speaking mostly about things like Nine Worlds which is my home convention and Worldcon which I try to go to when I can. Things that are more media focused like a Comic Con would be quite different. We're going to start with stuff that Twitter and I recommend you do before the convention. And the first thing is to check the program. For me, checking the program as soon as it comes out is a massive treat because I get to look at like what I've got to look forward to and I get hyped and I get so excited. But you'll also see straight away that there's probably like five things you want to do each hour roughly. So as soon as you look at the program, you'll understand that there is no way you can see everything. This is the first step for me to have a good convention and this is something that I struggle with every time. I want to see everything, I want a time turner, I want to be able to go to every single panel and I can't and you can't and we kind of have to accept that because if we try and see everything we will be super exhausted and we will still not have managed to see everything because we don't have time turners. Conventions like Worldcon will have like maybe 20 things going on every hour. It can be really overwhelming to choose from so what I do is I look at it ahead of time, I pick three to five things that I am most interested in and then ahead of the actual panel slot I can choose from this smaller selection and having narrowed that selection ahead of time it helps me make a choice of where I want to go to much easier when I'm actually at the convention. I don't feel as much like I'm missing out and it still leaves me with a lot of flexibility. Another thing that I would say is if you see a panel slot at any time in the day where you look at all the panels and you're like they're okay but nothing is kind of fantastic and rocking my world then also make a note of that because that might be a really good time for you to take a break and have some food or catch up with a friend. Now a really important thing to do in my opinion before you leave is a supply run. Robert on Twitter says bring as many supplies with you as you can bear to bring. It'll probably be much more expensive at the con. On your supply run you should be getting things like snacks, snacks to keep in your room, other things that are quite important. If you're going abroad, power adapters so that you can plug all of your things. If you buy it ahead of time, it's much cheaper than if you have to buy it in the airport. Also a multi-plug, especially if you're going to be staying with roommates. If you're the one who brings the multi-plug, everyone loves you. And if you're going abroad and you bring one adapter, and a multi-plug then you can plug all of your things in your multi-plug and you don't have to keep switching out what goes in the adapter in the wall. If you're a board game fiend like me you might want to bring some small card games to play in the evenings. Some conventions will have a game room where they have a bunch of board games and you can of course go and play those during the day but they you know shut at a certain time in the evening because they're run by volunteers so if you want to carry that on in the evening uh, bring your own board games. Another thing you should consider bringing from home is books that you want signed by your favorite authors. If you look on the convention website ahead of time you should be able to see what authors are attending and what authors have signings and if you already own their books and you love them and you want them to sign your books then you should bring those books with you. That way you don't have to buy a new copy to have it signed. Melissa on Twitter suggested that tea drinking Brit might want to bring a travel kettle and some tea bags with them if they are traveling to the US because hotel rooms won't necessarily have kettles in them. And a travel kettle sounds like a good idea just to make like instant coffee and things like that as well. And of 
final thing to bring is cash because as several people have pointed out, the hotel or convention center that you're going to will not necessarily have cash points available nearby or cash points available to use without a fee or indeed cash points with money left in them because if you're going to a really big con and there's only one or two cash points in the convention center, they might just run out of cash after the first day. Not every vendor will accept credit or debit card and if their whole credit debit card setup relies on uh, Wi-Fi that might get cut off if there's a lot of people trying to use the Wi-Fi or the 3G at the same time. So it's always safer to have some cash on hand. Next up, we've got some more general packing tips. The first one comes from Susan, Ellen and Jenny, all three of whom recommended using packing cubes. They are like internal dividers for your suitcase. You pack stuff inside of a cube by category. It kind of compresses all of your clothes into taking a bit less space. And then when you get to the hotel, everything is nicely separated into categories and it's much easier to find your stuff. So I have actually ordered some packing cubes. I am not yet initiated, but I will, I think, soon be because that sounded really, really great. And also in line with my own packing advice, which is that for cosplay, I like to pack all of my costumes separately from one another. That way I know what I need to grab in the morning to go in the hotel bathroom and like put all of my costume on and it's just much easier that way. The next thing is to leave a room for bringing some swag home. If you're flying and taking some hold luggage with you, Melissa on Twitter recommends taking a change of clothes, PJs, medication, and a small bag of toilet reese in your carry-on with you, just in case luggage happens to be lost or takes a little bit longer to arrive at your destination. And the final piece of packing advice is for me and it's to prepare a convention bag, a bag that you will be lugging around with you during the convention. There is a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to tell you everything that is in here but I'm going to do that in a separate video because otherwise this would get so, 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 so long. <laughs> Next up, a quick word on budgeting. I find it really helpful to think about my budget for a convention beforehand because conventions can get really, really expensive. And even if the budget that you kind of figure out is flexible, it helps for me at least to have figured it out beforehand. So I like to run through what a regular day on the trip will look like and write down what I think that I might need to buy. If you're traveling abroad, you'll also want to check on things like taxes or tipping in the country you're visiting. The obvious example everyone knows is Europeans going to the US and being shocked at how much we have to tip for everything. So. I literally just googled what should I tip for in the US and found a chart that tells me what to tip for in the US and I'm going to print it and take it with me. Two tips to uh, keep in mind that might save you money when you're traveling to a convention hotel is that there might be a shuttle between the airport and the hotel that you're going to and if there is it is often either free or much cheaper than public transport or a taxi so you want to check that. And then uh, thanks to Daraval on Twitter for pointing this out, I would have never thought of this, but plenty of conventions arrange a parking discount with the hotel. Check on the convention website ahead of time. You might be able to park your car there for a lot cheaper if you are driving. I'm not going to tell you how long I've been recording and we've only got to the part where you arrive at the con, but it's a little bit sad. Anyway, you're at the con now. Show up early for registration. Show up as early as possible. There can be really, really long queues. Just get there early is the safest bet. Now, if the con has specific badges or stickers that you can pick up next to registration, pay attention to those. Make sure to at least have a look and see what they mean and whether you need to take one. They might have things like a certain color of lanyard means don't take pictures 
of me, please. And in that case, you know, if that is something that interests you, you can pick up one of those. Or if you're planning to take pictures or video like I am, it's good to make sure that you can see which those are and you can try and remember that as you are like vlogging or doing something like that. Sometimes they also have things like accessibility stickers. That means that someone can sit in the accessibility seating area. I am going to say this, it should go without saying, but if you don't need the accessibility seating, then don't sit in the accessibility seating. If the convention offers pronoun badges or stickers that have, you know, the pronouns that you use on them so that people know how to speak to you, then take one of those. They're really useful. You might think that you don't need them because your pronouns are obvious to everybody, but it's not always the case that people's pronouns are obvious to everybody and it's just much easier to not have people guess you have a badge with your name on it. It is also super helpful to have a badge with your pronouns on it so that people don't make assumptions. Related to this, Lucy on Twitter brought up a point that I hadn't thought at all. They say if you're trans, non-binary or unsure of your gender, use conventions as an excuse to go out in public with clothes you've always wanted to. There are so many cosplayers that nobody will bat an eyelid. And they also added that they did that just this weekend and that sounded really great. Something that came up over and over again when I spoke to people on Twitter was self-care. Self-care is really important at conventions because conventions are fantastic, but they are also very, very overwhelming. There's so many people, so many things to see. You might have heard of something called the 521 rule. This is a kind of common sense rule of convention going that says that every day of the convention, you should have at least five hours of sleep, two meals and one shower. As Cass reminds us on Twitter, that is a minimum. That is not what you should be aiming for. That is the minimum that you can get away with. If you can have more sleep, especially at the beginning of the convention, that is really, really great because if you start off tired on day two, then that just kind of dominoes down to the rest of the convention and it's not very pleasant. So try to get some good sleep. Definitely stay hydrated. I carry a water bottle with me everywhere I go at conventions and people have pointed that over again and again on Twitter as a top thing to do. Also, make sure to eat some fruit and veg. If you're going to be drinking at the con, just be careful to pace yourself. Don't get super drunk on the first night because that will much like the lack of sleep, domino into the later days of the convention and you'll feel super, super rough. Even if you're not drinking loads, make sure to pace yourself and also have a lot of water and also have some food with your drinking because even a few drinks a night, if you do that like four or five nights in a row at a convention, you will feel those effects on top of tiredness at the end of the con. Something super, super important that introverts already know about but extroverts like me also need to learn is to take time outs. If you need to take time out because it's a bit overwhelming, the convention is a lot, there's too many people, you could of course go and have a sit down in your hotel room if you're staying in the hotel. If not, you could ask a friend if it's okay to go and sit in their room for a little bit or you could check with the convention if they have a quiet room for that purpose. If you ask the information desk, they should be able to tell you. Another thing that you can do if there is not like a quiet room for you to go and sit in would be to take a walk outside of the convention center, which uh, Kate reminds us you should do every day in any case to remember that the outside world exists and just chill out for a little bit. And like I already alluded to, you should do this even if you don't feel the need to absolutely do this, even if you're not thinking it's too many people, it's too much. Even if you're a massive extrovert and you want to be talking to loads of people, you should take a breather. It's actually really good. One type of breather that I like to do is that I like to change clothes in the evening. I like to go up to my room and wash my face, put on some new makeup, top up on the deodorant and change my clothes and, you know, come back down so refreshed for an evening of, you know, socializing and having dinner and talking to people in the bar. And even if it was just a half an hour, like for me, it really, really makes a difference. And I didn't think that it would. Actually, it's really great. Next up is a food. If there is a hotel breakfast included in the price of your room, go 
and eat all the things. <laughs> Especially if you have warm options or savory options, you can have like a proper full meal for breakfast that's already included in the price of your room. And then you can even grab some like mini muffins or a croissant or like a piece of fruit or something. And you can have that in your bag for a snack later. We've already talked about getting snacks when you do your supply run before being at the convention. What you should be mindful of is that if you are getting things to eat in panels. They should be panel-friendly snacks. Make sure you are not bringing noisy to eat or smelly things in panels because, you know, you have to sit next to people. It's not necessarily nice. Speaking of panels, if you have a panel that you really, really want to see, get there early. It's always really frustrating when you want to see a panel and the convention staff just closes up the room and says, sorry, you can't get in, but they really can't help it. Most likely the convention center or the hotel will have a set number of people that's allowed to be in that room in terms of fire safety, health and safety, their insurance. You can't have more people in that room than is allowed without jeopardizing like the convention returning to that hotel the next year so it sucks if you can't get in but like don't take it out on the volunteers generally be nice to the volunteers they're volunteering so you can have nice things if you are so inclined you can bring some small craft project maybe some knitting some sewing into panels with you this is something i've done before and i found it so nice and relaxing to have something to do with my hands while people were talking and it's really nice to see your project like taking shape uh, during the convention caroline also pointed this out on twitter and i very much agree with her most panels will have a q a section at the end only bring questions to the q a do not be the person who goes, well, this is more of a comment than a question. Now, I know this sounds like a really hackneyed piece of advice at this point, but I've heard people say that. <laughs> like, it happens. That's why people make fun of it. It's because it's still going on. Don't do it. A really important note, if you're going to be speaking on a panel yourself, set an alarm for yourself before the panel to remember you know where you need to be in a certain amount of time so that you can get there and not be late not have to rush there at all just the act of setting an alarm makes me feel a lot better because i've put a safeguard in place to make sure that i cannot forget about it. And of course, if you're on a panel, also make sure to check the guidelines for panelists and moderators. They will be different for each convention, but the convention should send those to you ahead of time. Something that's especially useful if you're going to a bigger convention, like a Comic-Con with a lot of passing traffic, is to pick a meeting spot. Pick a very specific place where you and your friends can meet up if you get separated or if you want to go to different panels. Make sure it's not somewhere too busy where you're not going to get shooed away by security. A few things on cosplay that are from my experience cosplaying at Nine Worlds. I don't tend to do huge costumes with a lot of like foam armor and stuff. I love looking at those, but I have uh, not mastered those quite yet. So if this is the kind of costume that you have, then probably those tips don't apply. But I would say, aside from the packing tip from before to keep all your costumes separated, make sure that your costume's shoes are comfortable to walk in all day. If they are not, you should carry a pair of other shoes that are comfortable and then you can wear your really nice shoes for photos or for the masquerade if you have one. And then if you have to walk quite a bit between panels, you can just switch for your more comfy shoes. I always try to do a day either in normal clothes or in a really, really simple costume. This year I'm doing a 13th Doctor costume, so that's going to be really, really comfortable that's my kind of day off costume. The other thing that I would say is if you're planning on seeing friends or networking as well as cosplaying, you want to be mindful of like how much you just change your face. I did a costume one year where I wore contacts and a wig and I kept going up to people who I knew and it took everybody a hot minute to be like, oh, it's Claire. So now I tend to just do costumes that are like a costume and then it just happens to be my hair and glasses just because 
wigs are hot and uncomfortable and contacts are expensive and I like it when my friends can recognize my face. If you would like to wear a big wig and contacts and all of that and you want people to recognize you then I would suggest taking a picture in the morning that way you can either send it to your whatsapp group or tweet it and say this is what I look like today if you see this person this is me. Like I mentioned before I tend to change in the evenings not just because I really like having that break and that time for myself and being refreshed but also because costumes can be quite big and bulky and the bars can be really crowded so I prefer to be in like jeans and a t-shirt rather than like a massive skirt with a petticoat under it. I just you know would rather be comfortable when I'm hanging out out and socializing and having drinks in the evening. Speaking of socializing, next up we've got networking tips. If you're going to a convention as a professional or as someone who wants to be a professional in the field or as someone like me who's not really a professional but is doing something you know within the field and wants to talk to people about videos or podcasts or whatever, the main thing to remember is to talk to people as people and as fans because all the professionals who are going to be at the convention they are all there also because they are fans. Of course they're there for work but they are also there to see their friends and to be fanish and that you know is something that you already have in common that you can immediately use to connect with people. Now one thing about approaching people at a convention uh, to talk to them if you don't already know them is you want to be careful that you're not interrupting a private conversation. So if two people or three people are like in a huddle and talking then it's not entirely appropriate to go talk to them if you don't know them. They might be having a private conversation, they might be having you know a conversation with their agent or their editor, it might be like a professional meeting and you don't want to barge into that. Now the easy solution to approach somebody uh, whose work you admire to talk to them at a con is check if they're on programming because if they are on the programming you can just go to their their panel and talk to them after the panel. When people are filing out there's usually a little bit of time where the speakers and the panelists will talk to people, bring up something that they said during the panel or bring up some work of theirs that you like or you know something that you're both a fan of that you've seen them talk about on social media. People want to talk about themselves and their opinions, open up that conversation by like giving them some way to do that and just make sure when you talk to people that you're like also giving them options to leave that conversation if they need to do that for whatever reason. Now I've mentioned going to get drinks at the bar and chilling out in the evening and socializing in the bar several times in this video and that is because science fiction literary conventions have a thing called BarCon where basically if you want to talk to people you should go in the bar. <laughs> in the evenings you will have people just hanging out and milling around and chatting in the bar. Obviously you can participate in BarCon even if you don't drink alcohol. I would really hope that people wouldn't make any remarks or make you uncomfortable about that but if they do you can just like order a soda water or lemonade, something that looks like it might be an alcoholic drink and you don't really have to answer to anybody. Another tip for BarCon is to try not to get wasted because if you're going to a convention to network you do not want to be remembered as a person who got really drunk and said really unfortunate things in the bar. Vicky on Twitter pointed out if you're there in a professional or networking capacity you should bring some business cards. If you're attending the convention as a beginning writer this is a really really important tip. Do not bring your manuscript. Do not ask people to read it. If you are going to a pitch session that's organized by the convention then by all means do pitch at that obviously but do not pitch your manuscript at people in the bar that have not asked you about it. You do need to be ready to give a one sentence elevator pitch of your book 
if someone asks you about it, you might be talking to someone and they ask you, oh, what do you do? If you say, I'm a writer, they might well ask you what you're working on at the moment. And at that point, you need to be able to say something like, oh, well, I'm working on edits on my book. It's such and such meets such and such. And that needs to be it. Leave the ball in the other person's court so that they can ask you more about it if they're interested or they can move on if they're not interested. And if you know, that person is interested and you have a really nice long conversation about it and they end up by saying, hey, I'm really interested in your story. Can you email me about it next week? Then email them about it next week. This is when you want to be professional and not be like, I have a USB drive with my manuscript on it because the, that's not what they want. Now, when you get to the very end of the convention and you're about to leave, one thing that's really, really important to do is to check that you have everything with you. I once forgot my house keys at a convention and then I had to ring the hotel security people so that they could find the keys for me in the lost and found and then courier them to me across London so I could get into my apartment finally and that was not a fun time so it can be a really good idea to like put a little tracker in your bag and it can um, let you know if you're leaving without some of your stuff. So that's something I wasn't aware of. That was recommended by Copper Hamster on Twitter. There is a Digital Trends article as well that they sent in about the best Bluetooth trackers and I will leave that in the description box below because I think it's a really good idea. And finally we are at my one piece of advice for after the convention. It is very likely that you will be exhausted and probably coming down with something. Conventions are so crowded, there are so many people coming from different places, people shaking hands a lot, even if you've used tons of hand sanitizer, which you should, you might still be coming down with something. So if you are able to at all, I would uh, highly suggest booking an extra day off from work after the con just for crashing and sleeping in your own bed and just like recuperating. I have done this for every con since my very first world con, which was Lone Con 3 in 2014. Every time I pat myself on the back for having done that, when I get to sleep in the day after I fly home. And that's it. I hope I haven't forgotten too many important things. If you think that I have, please do leave a comment below to uh, give me your tips and tricks for the best convention experience. I wanna thank so much the people that have already taken the time to comment on the Twitter thread, which I will also put in the description box. You've reminded me of so many things that would have slipped my mind and you've made this video a whole lot better. Thank you so, so much to Eric, Lucy, Caroline, David, Melissa, Adela, Ali, Rosalind, David, Joe, Emily, Elizabeth, Alex, Womble, Robert, KJ, Vicky, Susan, Ellen, After Asparagus, Luck and Locke, Fia, Goo Cow, Daravel, Kate, Copper Hamster, Eddie, Jim, Penguin, Cass, Rob, Raya, and Wreck. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching, and see you soon.